Oh. Did you see that? No. Mm -mm. I'm just curious about uh -huh. the law. I don't mean to. I'm just curious uh -huh. about the law. The suspect, Brian Koberger, was pulled over one month before the crime. There's an interesting power dynamic and personality change in this interaction that investigators should take note of in trying to understand Brian's personality. If you're interested in people's work choice and what this work choice tells us about them, subscribe for more videos. And if you like the video, click the like button. What do you think about the interaction we're about to see? Let us know in the comments. Hello, Hello sir. I am Officer Loangus. Stop being audio and video recorded. I think, I, know, I think you know why I stopped you. You ran the red light. What actually happened was I was stuck in the middle of the intersection. Yeah, so I was, I was behind you the whole left. time. Yeah. yeah. As a rule, politeness governs face-to-face -face interactions, especially between strangers. And this interaction is no exception. With her words, I think you know, the officer not only includes Brian, but she also treats him as an equal, that he's also smart enough to know this. In general, this is the best type of communication, without strict commands and condescension, especially when you're the authority in the conversation. Brian's first response is a self-protective statement. He doesn't say what I think happened, he says what actually happened, as if what he's about to say is the objective truth. The adverb actually is used when someone's comparing one thought to another thought. Here, Brian contrasts what the officer said to what he's about to say. This is the first sign of Brian trying to justify his actions, but by saying I was behind you the whole time, the officer quickly lets Brian know that she won't let him get away with it. So technically you're not supposed to enter the intersection at all for that reason, because if the light turns red then you're stuck in the intersection and then you're on the red light. So. That's the reason I stopped you. Do you have your license on you? Yep. According to the argument model, which you can use to test how good your friend's or spouse's arguments really are, I'm joking. Sort of. The officer's claim is that it's fair she pulled him over. Why? Because he wasn't supposed to enter the intersection. These are the grounds that justify the claim. The warrant which is how a person gets from grounds to claim, then becomes that because he wasn't supposed to enter the intersection, she pulled him over. Thus, this is an irrefutable argument and Brian gives in. However, is that all he does? Let's watch. Thank you. Do you have the registration and insurance? Yes. You what? I'm just gonna get this out for you. Okay. So can you, would you explain that to me a little bit further? Brian shows signs of feeling inferior, which obviously makes him nervous. Firstly, he feels the need to explain what he's doing when 10 seconds have passed from the officer's request. I'm just gonna get this out for you. Okay. Which shows that he's very self-aware. Secondly, he makes a self-repair. So can you, would you? A self-repair is when we want to retract what we've just said for whatever reason. His self-repair makes his question sound even more polite and indirect, and it's followed by a micropause, indicating that he's looking for the best and most polite way of asking. Clearly, he doesn't speak freely, which is how we can be sure that he's not saying exactly what's on his mind. Politeness in these situations, and in many other situations as well, is oftentimes a shield or overcompensation. Explain Thirdly, he says, explain to me, and inserts the mitigation a little bit, as if he doesn't want to monopolize her time. His words point to the officer as the authority. Whether or not he actually thinks she is, is another issue. Politeness functions as a shield, as a way of disguising emotions such as anger and disgust. In the following, there are several indicators of resistance. So in Pennsylvania, when you're stuck like in their intersection, mm -hmm. you have to make the left. So what would what would the appropriate thing for me to have done? Not been? just just. You're not supposed to block an intersection like that in Washington. So the just 
by you blocking the intersection, that's technically a ticketable violation. With his silk repairs, micro pauses and gesticulation, which momentarily replaces the word he was about to say, Brian shows reluctance, which is also underlined by his overcompensating nodding when the officer answers. The power dynamic is interesting. Unlike Brian, the officer speaks fluently and without pauses. This makes his speech pattern assertive. And then thus, then you're running a red light, so it's another ticketable offense. So you're not supposed to proceed into the intersection until you can go. Because a lot of people do what you just did, right? Is like you're sitting in the intersection waiting, and then turns, and then you're blocking, so. Yeah, there was a little <laughs> bit of confusion with speeding because someone had stopped. I wasn't sure what they were doing, and then they put on their light to turn. Mm -hmm. So I thought that maybe they were letting me go through. Oh. Did you see that? No. Mm -mm. The officer gives detailed explanations, and in most situations, they would have closed the conversation. She even tries to make Brian feel less guilty by saying that a lot of people do what he's done, if he feels guilty, that is. There are many indicators that he isn't. And in this passage, that's yet another indication. Because yeah, it's noteworthy that Brian only says yeah before he continues blaming other circumstances for what is essentially his mistake and his mistake alone. Yeah isn't followed by agreement tokens like OK, I see or something similar. Instead he uses yeah as a continuation marker. Yeah, Even though it could be a coincidence, it's worth noting that the officer clears her throat at the onset of Brian's continuation. When a speaker clears her throat, it can be a sign to the other speaker that she's getting impatient. Teachers often clear their throat, and not always because it needs clearing. Slowly, Brian gets less polite and more assertive. With a firm gaze, he now asks the officer, did you see that? Once again hinting that she might not have seen it all or seen enough to give him a ticket. He still inserts the mitigation a little bit in order to downplay his objection, but he still lets it be known that there was confusion about the speeding, allegedly. Not that he was confused. Linguistically, he's making the confusion sound objective. He says he wasn't sure what they were doing, again hinting at his belief or excuse that other drivers were to blame for the alleged confusion. The officer uses the realization token O oh, prior to her two negations. Oh. Did you see that? No. <laughs> Next, we learn that Brian sees this combination as an okay sign for him to continue his excuses. No. <laughs> yeah, like right before I made the turn, there was someone who like, made a right. And they didn't have their, you know, their signal on, so I wasn't sure if they were just waiting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would just advise. Uh, just don't enter the intersection until you can go, so you don't get stuck. Um, let's see. Once again, Brian makes himself sound justified at the expense of other drivers, saying they didn't have their signal on. The officers mm -hmm. is an acknowledgement token. It acknowledges what the other speakers said without necessarily agreeing with it, or even accepting it. There's downwards intonation, making it sound conclusive and skeptical, rather than urging Brian to continue as upwards intonation would have done. With so, she continues to conclude and close this conversation, and Brian already realizes this after the verb advise. Yeah, so I would just advise, uh, just don't- However, there's more Brian would just like to know. But in that situation, the best thing to do then would be back up. And not- I don't know if there's a best thing to do in that situation, because you're either gonna back up into somebody, yeah. or you're gonna run a red light. So, or you're going to be sitting in an intersection. Yeah. There's not really a great option there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was just slightly into the crosswalk, so... Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, where I'm, I'm from Pennsylvania, we mm -hmm. actually don't have, like, crosswalks. Oh, So even if you're, if you're kind of slightly... They have, there's a little bit more leeway as well. Like, there are a few lines. Like, there's one white line and there's another one. Mm -hmm. front. Like, there's, like, a, like a certain yeah. margin from which you can actually kind of put your vehicle, place your vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, so I know laws vary state to state, but there is a law yeah. in Washington for blocking an intersection like that, proceeding through when yeah. it, you don't um, 
when you're just stalling. I forget the actual verbiage. I can find it for you, but it's like stalling, blocking an intersection. Yeah. Brian in starts by asking a question. However, bad. in relation to everything else he said, it sounds more like a statement to make the officer realize the hopelessness of the situation he was in from his point of view. Because it should be obvious to all drivers that you shouldn't start backing. He's now comfortable saying the word back, the word he was hesitant to say in the beginning. So what would what would the appropriate thing for me to have done? Not just just. This points to a subtle change in the conversation. Brian's getting more assertive, and now it's the officer who's pausing, using hedging language, and making self repairs. Not. I don't know if there's a best thing to do in that situation because you're either going to back up into somebody yeah. or you're going to run a red light um, when you're just stalling. I forget the actual verbiage. I can I'm just curious about uh -huh. the law. I don't mean to... Oh, no, yeah, I yeah, can find it for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one second. That looks good on a Hyundai. I don't see Pennsylvania registration like at all. Okay, let's see. Expires November 22nd or 2022. Okay. And um, yeah, one of those is actually. Yeah. Okay, that looks good. I'll hand that back to you. I'm just gonna go check your info. I'll try to find that uh, RCW, the law for you, and I'll be right back. Thank you. All right. Brian says he's just curious about the law. It's a dependent advert, meaning that the subject's comparing two thoughts at the same time, like when someone says we're just friends or we're just gonna hang out. In sentences like these, the subject's comparing being friends and hanging out to the opposite of that, being more than friends and doing more than hang out. In comparison to what we've seen and heard, Brian doesn't just seem curious about the law, which is the exact reason why the adverb is there, because he's comparing simply being curious to not simply being curious. So I'm not writing a ticket or anything like that today, I understand you're from Pennsylvania, but in the future, don't proceed through the intersection. You can't get stopped yeah. for that alone um, unless you can clearly just clear it right away. Okay. So, um, yeah. yeah I, I do apologize if mm -hmm. I was asking you too many questions about the mm -hmm. law. I wasn't trying to like... No, no, no. Not at all. Like, I understand you're not from here, so... Yeah. Um, if you don't, a lot of people don't know a bunch of laws. Like, I only know it because this is what I do, but... Um, Despite the officer's previous skeptical acknowledgement tokens, Brian's effectively talked his way out of a ticket. Brian doesn't simply say, I'm sorry, or even I apologize. He says, I do apologize. Do points to a certain hesitation about apologizing, which is in line with the resistance we've observed. Along with his excessive, overcompensating nodding, however, the apology underlines the politeness he's displayed throughout this entire conversation. Also, the apology itself is unreliable. It's unlikely that he's sorry for asking the officer too many questions, because these exact questions, or assertions more like it, let him off with a warning. And who wouldn't want to avoid a ticket? However, politeness goes a long way, because most people will see it as kindness or humility. And Brian's obviously learned that. Many drivers behave like Brian, making it seem like the other drivers or even the lines on the road are to blame for what is essentially their mistake. The interesting thing about this case is that Brian's a suspect. Could a conversation like this point to a general pattern of behavior? How deep does Brian's politeness really go? These are the questions investigators should be focused on when listening to Brian's explanations. 